What's up guys? Today I'm going to do another video on the value of the Capital One Venture X. But this will be about some much lesser talked about reasons. Recently, I have done some videos on higher end travel cards. And some of you may not know this, but I do read every comment and I respond to almost every comment. Sometimes one or two do slip by, but for the most part, I do really well in that regard. Sometimes a comment actually sticks with me and it changes the way I see things. One such comment was about the Chase Sapphire Reserve and in a conversation about the annual fee and how to possibly mitigate said fee, the commenter stated that the card gets a credit that offsets $300. And in his eyes, he pays the remaining $250 annual fee just for the protections. It's like paying for insurance. It saves not having to purchase that insurance every time you book a flight or a hotel. That really was a revelation for me. I have to admit, I had never really paid much attention to these benefits. And like most of us in the game, I focus on earning and redeeming points and miles. I love the extras like lounge benefits and complimentary hotel status and things like that. But I never really dove into the travel insurances and the purchase protections. Well, until now. I think we can all agree that the Capital One Venture X is basically annual fee neutral. I'm not going to tell you that the Venture X has a $395 annual fee or that it comes with a $300 travel credit and an anniversary bonus of 10,000 miles. So that makes the card free or them paying you $5. I don't believe that and you shouldn't either. However, I do think it is fine to say that the Capital One Venture X is the easiest premium travel card to justify the annual fee, and it's also the cheapest way to hold one of the big boys. So if the money is even, what are the pluses of the card? What are the often overlooked benefits that make this card worth so much more than just those hard numbers? Well, today I want to get into those, and I want to give you some of my opinions and experiences when it comes to these mostly forgotten perks of holding a Visa Infinite card. See, it's only fair that when we sing the praises of the Chase Sapphire Reserve for having great travel protections, and we most definitely throw shade at City for not having them at all, we should probably get this information out there as well, and with maybe a little more detail when it comes to the Venture X, right? Okay, so if you want to nerd out with me for a few minutes, I'm gonna explain why the numbers don't show how great this card is in your wallet, and I won't even mention how much I love the Capital One lounges. Okay, I'm gonna take that back. I, I think I might bring that up. So if you like videos on credit cards and travel, then consider subscribing, and if you feel your time was well spent here, slap that like button for me, and let's get started. Like I said before, this Venture X is a Visa Infinite card, and that's where these protections and benefits come from. So if you're someone that's already gearing up to scream, Capital One doesn't have good customer service. Well, I have news for you. Capital One is just the issuer of this card. You'll be dealing with Visa, which is a well-oiled money-making machine, right? Ever hear of folks bragging about how Amex Platinum has a concierge? Well, this card provides one as well. So if you need a table at that exclusive restaurant, or maybe even some tough to get concert or sports tickets, maybe give the concierge a call. I'd love to hear about anyone who has used this benefit. And remember, anything you're requesting, you are responsible for the cost. T-Swifty tickets are not free. This one is talked about quite a bit, but never really in any depth. Primary auto rental collision damage waiver. How this works is you don't have to purchase the additional insurance with that rental company. This insurance covers you for damages caused by theft or collision. Now, there is obviously a lot of fine print with these agreements, such as this insurance will not cover you for damages to someone else's car or anyone or anything damaged as well. So this is just to protect your rental car. In short, this really just saves you a lot of money if you rent cars often. Couple tips, guys. This is for cars that are valued at $75,000 or less and you need to decline the rental car's additional insurance, and you need to use your Venture X to actually rent the car. On a side note, there are some places where this is not going to work. The primary rental coverage is not available in 
Israel, Jamaica, Ireland, or Northern Ireland. Funny because when I first got this card, I thought I was the bee's knees headed to Ireland and I was going to save some big time money. Uh, no, I had to purchase their insurance. You live and you learn, right? Travel emergency assistance is a tricky one, but Visa will assist you if you need some type of medical referral. Say a loved one gets sick and you want some help finding a good doctor. Or if things get really weird, they will find you some legal assistance. That's more for you younger guys. Now, I do want to note here again, any services that you do retain will be your responsibility as far as paying them. No free rides. This one is a big deal for most of us and I want to explain it just a little. Trip cancellation slash interruption. That trip you planned 10 months ago, it could be in jeopardy if say, family member dies or someone suffers accidental bodily harm or from some type of physical illness. This is one you need to keep a link to handy because there are a lot of details. But if you book with the VentureX, you will be insured up to $2,000 per person. A couple other things. This insurance also covers the carrier going bankrupt or dissolving. How do I know that? Well, I booked a couple flights with the official airline of Malta and the government dissolved it. Now, I didn't need to file a claim well, not yet, because it looks like a newer Maltese airline has been formed and they are taking all the routes and reservations. But something to think about if you are flying around on those discount carriers. A question you might have is this. Is this still good if I booked with points? Absolutely. You just have to use the card or the card's rewards program and you're all good. Great question, though. Trip delay reimbursement. I wish I knew about this one, but I am still learning, of course. Anytime your trip is delayed more than six hours or overnight, you are eligible for reimbursement up to $500 for you, your spouse, or any dependents 22 years old and under. That's 500 bucks for anything you may need to purchase to survive this delay. If you absolutely have to work during this delay, then yes, you need to purchase some headphones or some AirPods, whatever they're called, because I don't want to hear you talking on your MacBook at the Capital One Lounge. Save your receipts and hopefully this can make things a little better for you for your delay. On a side note, the Chase Sapphire preferred trip delay is 12 hours or overnight. So this really is a high level of benefits. One more thing. This doesn't just apply to flights. It could be your ship, your train, boat, whatever. But it does not include taxis, limos, or commuter trains or commuter buses. Lost luggage reimbursement. I once had a car seat lost after I gate checked it at the plane. Funny, huh? Well, this benefit will reimburse you the difference between the value of your luggage and the amount the carrier pays out, up to $3,000. So hopefully you can get Aunt Connie some new socks if they lose her bag. Purchase security or purchase protection. Sometimes the earnings on the card aren't as important as this protection. This one seems a little vague to me, but if the item you purchase is damaged, lost, or stolen within the first 90 days of purchase, it could be protected under this benefit and you could be reimbursed for the item or the item repaired in an amount up to $10,000 per claim and up to $50,000. There is a whole list of items not covered, but let's say I get lucky and I purchase a Rolex in Geneva this spring and I get jacked in a back alley in Switzerland. I will likely get that covered with this benefit. Very small chance of that happening because obviously my wife would definitely fight off a Swiss attacker. Return protection is something we talk about a lot with cards. But if the retailer will not accept the item back, you could be protected in an amount up to 300 bucks. Cell phone protection seems to be getting more common, but for some reason, my wife just got an upgraded phone at AT&T and AT&T put her on the protection plan and charged me $17 for the month. Obviously, I'll handle that, but you won't need that added protection if you pay your phone bill with the VentureX. Coverage is up to 800 bucks with a $50 deductible. This is for theft, damage, involuntary or accidental separation. And if it was stolen, you will need to contact authorities and file a police report within 48 hours. 
So guys, I can understand this part of the game being a little boring, but hey, how can we value all those things? Well, the Venture X, we don't really have to because the card is basically net zero and very cost effective already. So you can almost consider these very high level benefits as icing on the cake. You can find the entire benefits, terms, and condition easily on the Capital One site. And I would suggest reading through them just to put some of these ideas in your head. Also, if you have not decided to apply for a Capital One Venture X or a Capital One Duo consisting of the Venture X and the Saver One, then I will put my personal referral links in the description below. Using those links will absolutely support the channel. And if you have stayed around all the way to the end, I appreciate you and I thank every single one of you.